<laughs> Look at you, Mama Lou. Welcome to <laughs> Look at these children of Hashem. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. We did a show together mm -hmm. like about a month ago. A month ago, yeah. They're widely considered the cutest couple. They're such a cute couple. <laughs> so, yeah. Many of you described to me this evening about your journey. And I want to say this to you. Welcome home. So, Yosef is getting a checkup today. So let's see how he's doing. Hey guys. So we are at baby's doctor's appointment. This is his second doctor's appointment. So we're gonna see how he's growing, how he's doing. I'm sure he has grown because he's out of his newborn clothes already. 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 So uh, we're gonna be seeing how he's doing. We're just in the waiting room right now. It's hot out. Can you tell we got our sunglasses on, right? It's sunny. It's about, what, 75 today, I 75. think? 75. We're looking on the TV. It has the, uh, the, uh, the weather. Mm -hmm. And this weekend, we're getting like 80, 85. That's nice. That's nice. What's wrong, baby? Just making sounds. So, where are we headed today? Um, so then we gotta, after this, we gotta go to Costco because that's where we go to get wipes. Oh my gosh, they have the best wipes. They come in, what, you get like 900 and something wipes. We just, we love them. Probably get an almond butter. We like the almond butter from from Costco as well. Fire. So, yeah. Well, we just had get a big one. We just had this smoothie for breakfast, which I should have, I should have recorded. Yeah. I missed it. I missed the opportunity. Next time. Next time. It's just bomb. It's good. So we gotta, we gotta stack back up. We need to get some frozen fruit. All right, we're gonna we're gonna wait until baby get a checkup, and then we out. Also, oh. also we are after my six weeks. Me and the Daryl were on this like getting in shape. Oh, the health journey. So you guys are gonna be able to see our health journey. We're kind of already starting it with what we're eating now. Um, just eating healthier options. Like I said, he's the smoothie man, so he makes the smoothies all the time for us and uh just eating better so it's time because, it's time yeah you know i'm trying to just get in shape you know get a couple muscles or something <laughs> once she's you know she's ready to start working out and everything so when she goes she goes she gets <laughs> it so we're gonna we're gonna do it together which is awesome get in shape together okay all right so yeah. we'll, but we'll take y'all on that journey too it'll be it'll be fun all right so baby doing good baby is good He's healthy, so they said that he gained he gained a, a pound, uh, a pound an ounce, right? Yep, a pound, pound and one ounce. Pound and one ounce, and uh, since a week, since it's been a week, right? One week. One week. Two weeks, actually. Two weeks. So they said that was incredibly good. Uh, he's eating well. Everything's good. So thank God, real Kashim. Mm -hmm. So we're heading to Costco right now and going to get a couple of things. Costco is good for the big bulk of things when you have a big family, right? The big bulk. <laughs> um, so heading over there now, and stay tuned for that because we're gonna you're gonna shop with us a little bit. Welcome to the day in life, you know. So uh, get some popcorn. <laughs> Costco life, you know how it goes. Come in here thinking you get one thing, but then you leave okay, with so 27 bucks. We got wipes and we're good. I got some smoothie. It's a smoothie mix. That's it? That's all we're getting? We got romaine. Oh, almond butter. Oh, almond butter. Boom. Oh, what would she do without me? What would she do without me? Yeah, so what would I do without you? <laughs> See, one thing about Costco, though, you're always hungry. It makes you hungry. <laughs> Costco always makes you hungry. It's so funny. People looking at it like we crazy. Like, what they doing? Yeah, I, we're the I was only... starting to videotape and somebody <laughs> was looking at me like, what in the world? Oh good, you know, we working, it's our job, so it's, okay. it's all good. When you're in here, it just makes you want to get everything. 
It does. And you're like, oh, I could get this, or I can get this. I just want to buy everything. Things you don't even need, and you end up picking it up, and you're like, why did I get this? Got the OU texture. See, and then they, they got this big old bag. And then we get some agave. And then we good. See, we said a couple things. Now we got multiple things, but we should end up eventually get that though. So we use a lot of agave. So instead of a lot of sugar, we go the agave route. I put that in my coffee, teas, and all that. Look, we can start putting some of these. Those are mine. Well, me. you better go get another bag. <laughs> <laughs> you probably should get two bags. Okay, because I like those a lot. You do like these a lot. These dates right here are so good. So we put these in our smoothies. And then our little ones like this too. And we eat these with almond butter. Just dip them with some almond butter. And it's fire. $7.99 for the big old thing. Look at this. Look at this. Extra stuff. And we just said we're getting more shaped than Oreos. They're for our kids, though. They're for our kids. <laughs> are you sure? Yeah, maybe two are for me. <laughs> maybe two. <laughs> We didn't do too bad though. No. I mean, here's the thing. We got a lot of we got a lot of kids, so we we need stuff. You know. Yes. So, yes. It's all good. Blue for sure. Yep. What are we going at home? Yep. These chips. Let me tell you something. We couldn't even wait. We couldn't even wait. Probably like two back. They're so good. It's so good. Have you again? Had these? We wait. These are called what? These are the. These are the hip peas. Oh yeah, hip peas, the chickpea puffs. puffs that are so good. Have you ever put a, let us know in the comments if you've had these. And they got, they got different flavors. They got like a cheddar one. And they're mm -hmm. all like, they're like dairy free too. Mm -hmm. So they're all like, they're parved. The parv. um, mm -hmm. But this one right here, the white cheddar. <laughs> oh my gosh. Recommend them, they're very good. Get it. This isn't sponsored by it. It's not sponsored. Hippies. Nope. We now, just love now them. if they want to come in and sponsor us, <laughs> you know, we welcome that. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> but <laughs> wow. <laughs> now we're heading home. Today's the last day of the meal train. So our Rebitson is making some fish. She's making some salmon. And I don't know what, what else, but her salmon is amazing. She, we, I've had her salmon before. Actually, as a matter of fact, she made salmon for us last year when we had the meal train for Basia. Fire. And it was really good. She's a great cook. She knows We're really cook. excited about it. Papa! Aww, how their sisters greet each other when Maka gets back from camp. Yeah! Maka! You stinky? Say, oh. Say stinky. So it gets crazy. Hey, Bossy! It gets crazy right before bedtime. I see you. All cracks up new. But guess what? Right we cherish up. this craziness. Why? Because we're not going to have it forever. So Ima cherishes every moment. Cupcakes. Cupcakes. Cupcakes give you tummy ache after
that's how it goes. All right, guys, look at this baby right here. What? It's going down. We got some nice meat right here. Hey. Boom, look at this. Look at that. We're gonna cook outside. Look at that. Ooh, Cajun style. It's about to get crazy. It's my first time grilling. All right, so we're gonna go right here on it. Boom. So, I, I mean, I don't know what I'm doing, but this, I'm just putting it on the grill and we're gonna see what, what comes about. You know what I'm saying? So we got, you know, we got the kids out. She's stuck in the baby thing. She's stuck. Look. Oh, wow. <laughs> we out here with it. Mommy. Oh, yes, yummy. Okay, so my wife had to come out and help me out a little bit because I had it on too high. So she, so she was like, the chicken ain't supposed to be cooking that fast, right? So she, she left me out here with it, you know? So I'm just doing my own. Hey, my nose best. You gotta move them to where it's not directly on the heat. Say hi. Say hi. Is that you? Is that Basia? Are you ready to eat some chicken? Say shalom. Yeah. Okay. Say bye bye. She said, all right, it's game time. Let's eat. So first of all, that chicken was fire. It was that crisp on the outside. And then it, it was just, it was cooked to perfection. Right? So I can't take all the credit though. My wife came in and like laid everything straight. But now I know, <laughs> now I know what to do. So yes, the chicken was amazing. And it was my first time grilling as well too. But I did, I have watched my mom before and I knew like you should like spray water on your food on your chicken right I don't know why we do that I think it to keep it moist it's moist so to keep it moist I was making sure that I was spraying it with water um, but it came out so good like right like it was like the perfect amount of crispiness and then with the barbecue sauce it Ooh. was it was amazing so we're actually pretty proud of ourselves for this being our first time making barbecue chicken. It was fire. And so, where are we, what are we doing right now, babe? We are, are we off right to our shul for a special, special situation. Rabbi Tovia Singer. Excited to actually get a chance to meet him in person. We only, we've only met him uh, digitally. Uh, so it's gonna be good. You know, Rabbi Tovia Singer, he's been a pillar, uh, a very, very instrumental figure in our lives on our journey yep and um, we're just so grateful for everything that he's done for us and what i love about rabbi tovia singer though is how he approaches and teaches about it though in such a loving way we're excited he's coming to our shul and like he said that timing was just perfect because we got to uh you know interview him a month before and then find out he was coming like a so month cool. later so we're excited we're on our way right now many of you Look at you. 
Look at you, Mamalo. Welcome to <laughs> Look at these children of Hashem. Mm -hmm. Unbelievable. We did a show together mm -hmm. like about a month a ago. A month ago, yeah. They're widely considered the cutest couple. Tell me, they're such a cute couple. <laughs> so, so and, and many of you described to me this evening about your journey. And I want to say this to you. Welcome home. The Christian Bible prioritizes Jews for conversion. Romans chapter 1, verse 16. Many of you went to Yeshiva, you know this. <laughs> <laughs> I am not ashamed of the gospel. It's the power of salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and then to the Greek, or then to the Gentile. Matthew chapter 10 urges followers to go to the Jew, don't even go to the Gentiles, don't go, only go to the Lord Sheep and House of Israel. But there's another reason for this that's even more appropriate for our time. <coughs> These evangelical Christians are fascinated with eschatology and times. These fundamentalist Christians believe that in order for Jesus to make a second coming, you have to convert to Christianity. It's based on a passage in the book of Matthew. Matthew chapter 23, the last verse, verse 39, where we are told, I will not return unless you say, blesses is he that comes in the name of the Lord. Because when Jesus putatively made that statement, he was speaking to a Jewish audience, the church understands to mean one thing, in order for Jesus to make that second coming, you have to accept him as your Lord and Savior. You are holding up the show. <laughs> yeah, with the program. So therefore, it, evangelicals want to convert the world. They don't want to just convert the Jews. But there's an emphasis on evangelizing the Jewish people because they believe eschatologically, they believe that it is the conversion of the Jews to Christianity, no matter what they'll call themselves. Sure, they want to call themselves messianic. Knock yourselves out. You want to like shop, just whatever you want to do. Just accept Jesus. It's their conversion that will trigger the second coming. And they believe it's imminent. But they actually have a list of those, such as, <laughs> avoid jokes about the Jewish people. <laughs> and parenthesis, their money, etc. <laughs> Some Jews are very uncomfortable about this. It is very easy for me to stand here and persuade you that Jews for Jesus is a considerable problem for our nation. It's harder for us to ask the question of, about ourselves. Sometimes to look in the mirror can be more difficult. Where did speaking in tongues come from? It, it's a, one of the most common forms of Avedizara all of, from all over the world. So whether it was Native American Indians who would dance and go into this ecstatic beat of drums and chanting, where they would extemporaneously express, it was like people do this in, a, in, in legitimate groups, where people just scream spontaneously to get all that energy out. Okay? So, so many religions practice this. But Christianity did something really cool of it. So this leads <laughs> us to Acts chapter 1 and 2, where we are told that at the Pentecost, at Shavuos, instead of receiving the Torah, the followers of Jesus, the disciples received the Holy Spirit, and they were able to speak in actual languages. And people, we are told in Acts 2, were there who were from many different countries. And here the disciples were speaking in these languages, and these people who were there were saying, how is it that these Galileans, you know, that's a very important word, Galileans meant that you were from Bibedic. <laughs> Galileans meant that, so the Galileans in the northern part of Israel, where literacy was very low. It wasn't like someone from Jerusalem, so, so no, the Galileans, how is it that these people could speak these tongues? So it was a sign to everyone else that they are, they must have a the Holy Spirit. Now, that's a story in the Christian Bible, and it, this is found in Hinduism and all religious practices. People spontaneously just scream out anything. But the Christians say we're talking a language. Now, 
there are Christians view this activity in two ways. The church is divided on this. Some believe that this gift ceased. I mean, that's literally the term used by some about that this is not a gift anymore. But there are charismatic Christians, or well, Pentecostal, that's where they get the name Pentecostal Christians. It's was only about 100 years old. Uh, a minister actually here in California, go no. <laughs> <laughs> of all places in the cult religion would start. I can't believe it. I know it's a knee slapper. You know, it can happen. <laughs> a, actually, a member of the Church of God in Christ just started doing this. It was a pastor about 100 years ago. And, the, and this grew like wildfire, spread all over. That we are speaking a language that's foreign. And this is a proof that we are saved, that we have the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Because, and they're speaking in tongues. And this has spread all over the Christian world. Mm -hmm. There's only one issue. And that is, they're speaking gibberish. Mm. They're not speaking any <laughs> language. They're <laughs> babbling, they're speaking like a child talks. In fact, <laughs> linguists could study the speaking in tongues and very easily tell what the person's native language is. Mm. Mm -hmm. and, and as it turns out, I don't know why, but as it turns out, people who are Chinese who can't pronounce the, the R sound for some, for some reason when Chinese speak in tongues, the Holy Spirit doesn't pronounce the R sound. <laughs> I know, oh. crazy. Mm -hmm. Or people from <laughs> East Europe, from Hungary, who don't pronounce the W, what do you want? <laughs> so the Holy Spirit in Hungary doesn't pronounce the W. I don't That's know silly. why. <laughs> so this is all very silly. And now if they would not be arrogant about it, no one would care. But they go, this is proof that the Holy Spirit is speaking through me. So that part is, is offensive to people they are trying to convert. Now you ask them, what, you're talking nothing, nonsense. You're not speaking in a language. So they have two basic answers to this. One answer is that this is, it was a language, but that language went extinct. So it's an ancient language. So it's a brilliant answer because it's the, it's the fallacy of unfalsifiability. The whole point of it is this is supposed to be a witness to demonstrate that you are doing something miraculous and then you're speaking a language that no one can identify, so that it's completely unfalsifiable. And the context of Acts chapter 2, very important, is that the people we are told are speaking an actual language, and people are there to hear that. The other one is goes down the same type of unfalsifiable route, which is that this is an angelic language. So that's what it is. It's, it's, it's a phenomenon found in many different religions and all kinds of thing where people just scream extemporaneously and but the Christians have attached it. Now, one thing. It was I told you it started a hundred years ago. It did. But there actually were movements like this going back to the second century. Tertullian, the church, Latin church father from Carthage, he was part of the group that did this sort of thing. So throughout history there were groups that did th engage in this sort of practice. They can't replicate Acts 2 because that never happens. You can't replicate it. <laughs> but it's a, you know, it's a great children's story. Kids love it, but it's, it's not real. Yes, agents study this fake money. They become experts in it, and this way they can detect it. He said, Rabbi, that's not the way we do it here. The way we train our agents is we show them real money. We want them to really touch it, to really feel it. I didn't know this. American currency is printed on a paper. There is no other paper like it. And this government ensures that no one else produces it. There's a certain feel to it. There are shifting watermarks on the bills and complex engravings. There are fibers ensconced in the paper. And these agents learn everything there is to know about real money. Do you know why? I'll bet you know why. Because you have an agent with that sort of training and you dare, dare, put a counterfeit in his hand, he'll know it immediately. What's the message? Am I suggesting to you that you begin a new program training your kids in the Synoptic Gospels? They should know the Epistles of Paul by heart, that they don't join Jews through Jesus. You would be wasting your time. I would like to encourage the following. Teach your children the real thing. Teach them Torah. Yeah. Teach them the truth and beauty of the Jewish faith 
no missionary will be able to rob them of a relationship with the God of Israel. Mm -hmm. I am deeply grateful that you have chosen to have me here as your speaker this evening. Rabbi, thank you, and to all of you, thank you so much for having me here tonight on my first trip from the land of Israel. Mm -hmm. So tonight was so cool. Rabbi Tovia Singer was epic. Amazing. I mean, he had nugget after nugget after nugget, and we just appreciate him so much. And to meet him in person, especially because Ladero and I, we were learning from him before we even made the decision to convert to Orthodox Judaism. So to experience him live in person and um, to have that time and meet him, and you know, we had Q and A session of questions. Um, it was just awesome. So now we're gonna chill. She's gonna eat some bananas, almond butter. I'm gonna uh, kind of work on a few more designs. Excited to kind of share with you guys some really, really cool things we've been working on. And, uh, and then we're just gonna chill, rest of the night, talk, kick it. And we're gonna do what baby Yosef is doing in a little bit. He's knocked out. <laughs> <laughs>